Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. So I'm wearing the same thing and I'm in the same place because it's the same night. So yes, um, I just wanted to share a revelation that the Lord shared with me. And it kind of, it, it builds on something else that he had been really pushing on my heart that's really wonderful about his nature, who he is, why we're separated from him, and how we are reunited with him. Um, beyond the basics, more details into that. So there was a while ago, I was listening to um, a pastor who was preaching on the Garden of Eden and Eve. And he made the point that some people will argue about whether or not the snake was actually Satan or if it was a snake that was used by Satan and how it's a stupid thing to argue over. And I agree, it's a stupid thing to argue over. Um, however, I think it's a very useful tool to use to help us understand the why behind our separation from God. Um, and it's okay to ask why. And I've, I've wondered that for many, many years, always believing, but why, why is it so severe? Why couldn't God just say, okay, you're forgiven and let us into heaven? Like, why was that blood sacrifice needed? Um, you know, couldn't he just perform a miracle and cleanse us all? Um, but God does not break his own rules and his nature is part of the reason why. So I believe that the snake was a snake and it wasn't Satan. I don't think it could have been because God walked in the garden with Adam and Eve and God is absolute good. And there's a prophet and pastor named Robin D. Bullock who received a revelation from the Lord um, basically that God is absolutely good, meaning he can do no evil because there's no evil in him, so he doesn't ever do anything bad. Um, so the bad that's done to us is all because of our own harvests, our own seeds that we've planted, or seeds that other people have planted and the harvest that we've been kind of in the crossfire of. Um, but the part that really got me, and I didn't hear him really explain this in depth, is the part where God is an absolute and in the, the world of absolutes, I mean, he explains that he's absolutely good. And so in absolute goodness, there is no evil. However, what that means is in absolute light, there is no darkness and in absolute heat, there is no cold In absolute cold. There is no heat. And if cold tries to creep into absolute heat, it's annihilated. Like it's just, repelled and deflected and annihilated by the heat. The cold can't come there. Um, and if darkness tries to creep into absolute light, there's no room for it. It can't be there, it can't exist there. So the problem wasn't that God couldn't forgive or wasn't willing to forgive, he absolutely forgave. The problem was when Adam and Eve sinned and sin entered the world, they could no longer be in God's presence because his very nature repelled them his very nature would wipe them out. We can't just go to heaven as we are and just, hey, you're forgiven because any corruption, even the slightest little bit, is going to make it so that we can't exist in the presence of God. And that grieved God's heart so badly that the family that he so desperately wanted and loved couldn't exist in his presence. And so he had to find a way for an absolute cleansing. Um, and so we live in this world. Does that make sense? We live in this world of seed, plant, and harvest. It's a cycle, the laws of nature. You reap what you sow. Um, and then, was it yesterday? The day before. I don't know. I posted it on Facebook and I posted it on Zap It because this was so, so, so profound. Um, the Holy Spirit just popped it in my head because my head doesn't, it, it's not capable of reasoning like this. And I'm just going to read it because I'll mess it up. Okay. So Jesus, his resurrection didn't break the natural laws of harvest. It didn't break the laws of nature. Death only, become, only comes because of sin. The wages of sin is death. So sin causes death. If you sow a seed of sin, you reap death. And that is why the grave couldn't hold him. He didn't sow a seed of sin that would lead to death. 
though he was made sin for us, all of our sins were placed on him and died with him. He was our scapegoat. So all the sins were placed on him and he died and they died with him. They went into the grave with him. They stayed in the grave because that's the harvest of that sin, the grave, death. But he rose because his innocence gave him a harvest of life. So death was not allowed to keep him dead because he didn't deserve death to begin with. Because of his innocent nature, he couldn't die because it would defy the laws of nature. Because the laws of nature that God put in place say that someone without sin can't die. Sin causes death. The wages of sin is death. The wages of no sin is life. So that is why. He rose as his innocence, gave him a harvest of life, and that sin being left in the grave gave us a harvest of life as well. When we accept his gift of salvation, when we believe in his death and resurrection, that he took on our sins and died on the cross and took our sins with him to the grave and rose from the, again, from, from the, again, rose from the grave, conquering death for us, our faith gives us a harvest of life, our faith in that, our faith in him. So just chew on that for a little while because it's really, really amazing. But again, the problem was not that God couldn't just say, oh, you're forgiven, I'll let you in, like we forgive here, you know, forgive and forget or whatever. Um, we needed that cleansing. We needed that sin to be completely removed because if there's any little tiny ounce of corruption in us, then we can't be in the presence of God. It's the reason why Satan fell like lightning from heaven. Because as soon as that corruption entered him, God's perfection just burst him out. Like he couldn't be there. The angels didn't beat up Satan and kick him out. God's goodness repelled him. So, And it was such a force that he fell like lightning from heaven. Um, anyways, so I hope that makes sense and I hope that blesses you and kind of helps give a better understanding of the whys um, because I think it's important to answer the whys. Anyways, I'll see you guys later. Have a good day or night or whatever. Bye-bye.